Now, the reason as to why I haven't posted a video in 11, almost 12 days is because I was on vacation, but now I'm back. I'm going to pull up that content again. This one has been on my mind for a while. And right now, there's a lot of hype because of the recent performance of the trades and everything looks nice and shiny. But I honestly want to shine a light in an objective matter on the things that I think people miss out whenever something looks really nice and really amazing. But underlyingly, people should focus on the numbers, should focus on the structure and should focus on the future forecast of whatever this is going. I'm going to jump straight into it. I'm not going to talk about the protocol itself. I'm not going to talk about the updates, so on and so forth. I'm just going to focus on the things that concern or should concern any investor who is in Wolf Capital or want to jump into Wolf Capital, right? First things first, and that's very important, is that because of the risk of centralization, there is the first mover advantage. When people join in Wolf Capital at the beginning, that was about 128 days ago, I think, more or less. You can actually confirm that on Dune Analytics. Then the daily ROI was 1.5%, but now it's 1.1%. And that is the most you can get. Meaning the people who got an early hyper compounded and now they are in a much better position than anyone who enters now. And unfortunately, because there is this risk of centralization tied in with that fixed Per, uh, daily percentage that can just be modified whenever and this brings me to my second point and that is still a ponzi structure even though they say that they're moving away from this but think about it though you have a, the lock capital uh, situation you have the referral system you have that fixed daily percentage which again no, there is not a single investment vehicle in the world that can guarantee you a fixed daily percentage there's no way yield is dynamic keep that in mind and of course, the fact that you can compound to infinity, that doesn't help anyone. So you can keep compounding, adding to your stake, meaning the obligations are going to keep rising. And that is another issue is that those obligations are going to exponentially keep growing. All right. So just to give you an example of right now, we have about uh, or there is about 8.38 million uh, in deposits. So that's how much money people have put in. So if you want to factor in the average daily ROI, because you start at 0.8%, you can scale up to 1.1 depending on if you join a team or not. And I think you have to. So just take the middle point. At the middle point, that's 79K per day that is distributed to people. And that, that will keep growing. Keep that in mind. So in order to actually meet those obligations with the zero Ponzi structure, like the trader has to generate that much every day. And that is unheard of. I don't know how can this happen with one source of income that, you know, feeds those obligations. Because if there will be a day when deposits stop coming in, because right now the highest internal revenue for the contract are still deposits, you have the risk of the bank run because of the loss of confidence. All right. And that is something that can be clearly seen because it's not displayed yet since people are just withdrawing briefly but focusing more on compounding and dune shows you that about five percent of the whole amount deposited have been withdrawn which is still very early in its stage in regards to the bank run curve so keep that in mind all right and that's the thing so with one source of revenue you are technically relying on one person to hopefully generate that money and that is your internal centralized point of success or failure and that is cfi trading that's not DeFi. DeFi trading would be something different would be moving funds on chain to a dex a perpetual dex that trades for you and then distributes automatically but instead you are giving your money to one person that person is going to be trading and if they make money they will inject back into the contract for people to withdraw so that's the thing and in terms of trading in general as a profession if you look it up statistically speaking 90 90 percent plus of people who do this usually lose in the long haul so there's a lot of risk here and i'm not gonna say anything about wolf capital in regards to it being a fraud or regards to it being 
a scam because I hope it's not and by the looks of it it's not even though based on what I described there are flaws you know and drawbacks but they they were like bigger fish in the sea and one major example is called traders domain a very good investigator youtuber called coffeezilla made a whole bunch of series on them and their model is essentially wolf capitals so you have one person trading and giving back money the only difference is these guys or traders domain had i don't know 20 or 30 times the deposits that wolf capital has so just to understand how this works because in terms of forex trading and in terms of brokerage you have two types of books that are being dealt you have an a book and a b book an a book is very legit so the money goes to a bank the bank makes the transaction pays back the broker and the broker pays back the person so essentially a broker is a middleman whereas in regards to a b book there are no banks the broker is taking the risk of making money so if they make money for the trader or sorry the investor then they lose money and vice versa but if you look at wolf capital even though technically it's a b book all right there are no banks involved here it's still i mean the risk is not even on the side of the trader here it's still on the investor so it's a b book with a twist because at the end of the day they're not trading with the money they have they're trading from the money they got from you all right so zero risk for them Plus, plus, they're, they're getting a commission technically based on what? Based on that 10% in and out, I think, right now to deposit or to withdraw, I'm not sure. So, commission, zero risk, hopefully some profits. So that is the model, essentially. Now, again, I just want to, you know, draw a clear line and say this is nothing, this has nothing to do with you know, trying to generate any FUD or whatsoever. Those are just observations based on whatever I'm seeing. And those are things that people should be aware of. If you are someone who wants to jump in, you should understand how the protocol is behaving. And the fact that you want to add NFTs and so on, that doesn't mean anything. So you need to have a clear revenue source. You need to shift to a dynamic APR. And you need to somehow meet these obligations and at this point in time it's going to be a bit difficult because people are hyper compounding so what how can you solve this especially for the early adopters so again i honestly hope i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna finish it here i mean i just wanted to mention all of these things to wrap it up just be mindful of whatever is happening i hope for its success but i'd be aware because the numbers are against them right now so let's see what happens all right i really hope this brought you some clarity and some value i hope you stayed till the end thank you if you did see you in the next one have a good one